So hello everyone and welcome to the final day of our special Q4 webinar series. So if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. My name is Jelle Ploeg, typical Dutchie based in Amsterdam and I'm the global technology consultant at AWIN. So here at AWIN, my role is to offer impartial advice to our advertisers and, and agencies and therefore ease the burden from discovery through to activation as well as the optimization of any new tech partner re relationships. So over the last two days, we've covered great topics. So on Tuesday, we covered topics from Increasely and Tipsa on how to convert more shoppers from Google Shopping and from your biggest publishers. And yesterday, we covered the optimization part of, of eventually of the traffic that eventually lands on your website with particular audience and involved and precise. So feel free to book in the meetings with those ones uh, as my dear colleague Samantha, Samantha sent out very good follow-up emails with them. So to all of you, thank you for taking the time to attend our final day of AON special Q4 webinar series. And also a big shout out and thanks to Unicodo, Intently and Soreto for joining us today. It's safe to say that we'll be sharing some useful insights on the topic at hand today. The actual action part on your website where all the magic and the conversion happens. So our Q&A is now all also open for your questions, so please feel free to share any of those. And as of yesterday and the day before yesterday, mention them by name if you have a direct question for them. So as with the previous two days, I'll do some quick scene setting for today's topic before we then ask our guests to speak. So over the last few days, we've used this chart all week to demonstrate the size of the opportunity in Q4. The biggest volume is driven in Q4 and specifically in November when the, when we see the public shopping days like Singles Day, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So shoppers are not only looking for deals on these in your, in your individual dates anymore. Many are looking early in the month and many continue to shop around to shop around in the run up to Christmas as well. So there's a very long period of time when consumers are looking to buy during this Q4 period and often looking for deals. And that's why it's so important to ensure that your promotional campaigns are set up to promote the right products to the right audience to, at the right time. So research says that the best deals are offered at the start of November. During this time, the average discount is about 23%. And the week before Thanksgiving is the time when the number of deals is at its maximum. But the average discount is around 20%. However, after the Thanksgiving period, the average Black Friday discount increased to 37%. And that is just one aspect that tech partners can support your brand with during Q4. As you can see here, there are a variety of common di dilemmas that retailers face in terms of their marketing goals. And AWIN tech partners can help you solve them. At the moment, the online marketplace has never been more competitive and during peak, profit, profit margins came under a lot of pressure. Ensuring you have a promotional strategy that works for you and, and for your brand is really vital at the moment. And our tech partners offer great solutions for this. Now, obviously, this year's peak period is hard to predict. The mixture of lockdown, tough economic conditions and recent demands from consumers means it's very difficult to know how individuals will approach events like Black Friday. However, we did recently carry out some consumer research to understand more about how people's online habits may have been impacted by the pandemic. We've been surveyed almost 1500 shoppers across multiple regions like UK, France and Germany and asked them a series of questions about how they shop online and the different resources they use when they're browsing online. So almost half of the shoppers stated that they were now shopping online more than they, uh, than they ever did before, before the pan pandemic. And almost 65% stated they were now more likely to buy from new brands they hadn't tried before than prior to the lockdown. And when asked how often they search for deals and discounts when shopping online, over 50% stated this was something that they always do. And asked whether this behavior had changed compared to before the pandemic, almost 40% of the respondents said they now look online for more deals more frequently. So you as a retailer, let's face it, 
even if you have a retailer, are not a big fan of the pr promotional channel and are maybe thinking about moving away from it, it's really vital and more important than ever to have, to have more visibility on this channel and be precise in how you use this, this channel. Black Friday and Peak is heavily dependent on these pr promotions as well. If a customer can't find the deal at your website, they will go and search it, search it for, for the deal at one of your competitors. So for today's webinar, we're going to focus on this area specifically, which is key to drive more conversion during Q4. And with each of our fe featured partners today, we'll be highlighting a distinct aspect of this activity. First, we're speaking to Unicodo, whose solution always of allows you to take better control of the promotions you offer. Then we will have intently describe how you can enhance the customer experience on your own site and tailor deals to each individual. And finally, we have Soretto in the room will be joining us to explain why, even once a customer has conferred it with you, they can still be a valuable asset to your brand and how their tech can encourage these customers to promote your brand among their own peers. Now that, that you've listened to me discuss some of the context around the promotional channel and why it's important, Let's dive deeper into one of the solutions around action. So we're now joined by Courtney from Unicodo, the promotion experience platform that unites incentives that, mo that motivate with experience that inspires action. Thanks for joining us today, Courtney. How are you? Yes, good. Thank you, Yella. How are you doing? I'm very good, man. I'm very good. good, good. I great, have to, great to see you smiling. <laughs> I have to giggle firstly because one of the team actually said that uh, I said, can you sort my headshot out? And, and I'm looking at my headshot there and I'm, I'm looking a lot younger than I actually am. So I'm really sorry to disappoint everyone, to be honest, but there we are. <laughs> no problem, you look uh, bright and shiny, man. No problem. Hey, so uh, Cordy, before we get into our interview portion, uh, I'm going to hand over to you to run us through some slides on how Unicoder addresses the mid on the promotional channel. And we'll be doing a little bit of a, of a back and forth. So that's gonna be very uh, interactive as well. So uh, let's start. Sounds good. So Courtney, we have some myths that we uh, discussed, of course, in the promotional channel. So let's start off with one myth that is very important. So what a lot of retailers say, of course, so there's nothing to stop a code from leaking. Is it true? It's not true. Um, and, and I'm pleased that that's number one, actually. So the reality is, is that, you know, some codes, we actually want them to go as viral as possible and we want codes to get leaked. We want virality. Um, but in most cases and most of the clients we speak with, um, we don't want promotions to get leaked or shared. We want promotions to be exclusive or closed or only rewarding certain closed closed customer groups or certain segments. You can't really do that with generic codes anymore. That's the reality. Generic codes will get leaked. They'll find their way into the wrong hands. They'll get abused. They'll get misused. And what's really great to see is that a lot of brands are adopting single use code capabilities. Um, more often than not, that that involves kind of creating batch codes, downloading via CSV, sharing them via cells or sharing them with the end publisher. Um, what we do uh, is that we we help kind of automate that entire process. So um, having been auto, um, integrated with a lot of publishers already, um, we're able to automatically issue those codes so that single use unique codes can be issued automatically. And then for any publishers we're not integrated with, we've got a really slick solution. So how we approach um, providing control with publishers we're not integrated with is what we're providing a little HTML snippet that issues a single use unique code and on demand with a click to reveal button. So in doing so, it means that we can actually provide specific code to the specific customer uh, on demand. Um, and then we can also provide control uh, in other channels as well. So for things like CRM, um, stopping codes such as welcome emails, you know, welcome September 21 in an email or, um, you know, even on site activations that, that, that are offering codes, you know, if we can provide control there, it's going to prevent those codes getting leaked into other channels um, and, and providing better and cleaner attribution. Right. That's a great long answer, I guess. So uh, no code can be leaked anymore. That's fine. That's fine to hear. So let's uh, quick come to the next one. So codes are just for giving a discount or money off. Again, not true. Codes are there to provide a reward or an incentive. Um, and, and what we're on a mission to do is to, to sort of educate the market that, that codes can be there as, as a token really to unlock any sort of reward or experience or incentive. 
um, codes uh, it can be used to unlock things like content gates to to access or have exclusive access to certain products uh, or early access before they go on general release now it's not to say that that those products won't sell out anyway particularly in peak and particularly in the golden quarter but the reality is is that you know what if we provided a little bit more fomo a bit more exclusivity or a bit more of a vip experience where customers could get their hands on products early or they could get hands on products that are quite finite so you, you only think about the playstation 5 last year where nobody could get their hands on them in november um and and bt managed to provide only their super fast broadband customers access to buying um playstation 5s because they want to become the the uh, the broadband for gamers um, and, and as a result of that, those those products sold out at full price. There wasn't a discount in sight. Um, the other element of using codes is that you can you can help with you know repeat purchase incentives. So not always about money off again, but it could be about some kind of gift. You could be looking working with your trading teams to you know to look at overstocked or age SKUs that you might be able to use to incentivize people to to pay more um, and and to to come back again uh, again with re refer a friend programs as well. Um, uh, yeah. so we're going to touch up soon with Refer a Friend with Soretta, of course, because they also are in the room. So you give a little bit of a spike there. Thanks for that. So the mid three, we have uh, five more to go, guys. So, uh, so oh, that's a great one. So I was usually in sales, so I hear this a lot. So coach devalue our brand. Let's give it the shortest we answer, Courtney. Sure. So one of the one of the things we're getting from a lot of our clients is that we don't want to be known for discounting. We don't want to um, we we don't want to use codes because it's all about discounting. So in this essence, in, in this instance, what we want to do is we want to provide um, we want to provide those. Or it's kind of going back to what I was saying before. We want to give certain customers access to certain products or or be able to access certain rewards or incentives. Uh, and creating sort of a VIP experience and, and that can be getting customers to sign up to certain um, VIP lists or customer segments um, and as a result of that if you can create and curate that customer journey using codes you're actually going to add to the, the, the customer experience and add to the brand as well. Great one so yeah it's a very good answer I, I definitely go going to uh, train it on a, on a sales team so uh it's another one so publishers can't use single use code so we can't work with them yeah and i actually touched on this one before so i'm kind of uh, kind of going back on our old ground but um this is also something we get a lot which is you know either that manual process of we have to download or create batches of of, of single use codes and then share them um what we provide is we provide an automation of that process but we also provide you know bridges to the certain customer or, or certain partner journeys that that our, our customers didn't think were possible before so we're integrated with a lot of publishers already so they can automatically use our codes so they'll be issued on demand to customers um as i said before there's for any publishers we're not integrated with or that brands want to test new affiliates or publishers we'll provide a little html snippet and what that'll do is it will click and it will reveal a single use unique code on demand to that customer it's a really great way of testing uh, affiliates or publishers that you haven't been able to test before um, and obviously being able to access single use unique codes um, and then finally what we are able to do as well is provide a bit of a better smoother journey for the brand um, from things like paid search paid social and of course from the, that all important influencer journey where they want to issue codes without them being generic and being leaked so we can actually provide a journey that um, via an interstitial page that issues single use unique codes from influencers from paid search and social uh, direct to consumer as well Great, uh, great insight in, in that myth. So, ooh, yeah, it's the one that retailers mo are most fear, most fear. So the margins are, are definitely under pressure. So if I say as a retailer to you, don't want to use codes, mate, uh, codes erode my margins. Yeah, very, very well put, actually, Ella. Um, in the example that's on, on the screen there, um, you know, if you're going to use a generic blanket, discounts um, you are going to run the risk of eroding into your margins you know you, you're, you're not going to be able to control who's going to be able to access or who's going to be able to the, the number of purchases made against that code um, and we hear it a lot which is probably the main sticking point for a lot of the brands we speak to saying we don't want to use codes and we actually don't want to use your technology because we're afraid of using codes full stop 
in this instance and with Samsung, um, it's about looking at a different objective. So actually, how do we use codes to, to look, and again, looking at our trading team, how do we use codes to provide customers, specific customer segments with access to certain SKUs, whether they're overstocked or aged? Um, and how do we drive that different business objective? So it's an age old problem where, where there's overstocked or aged SKUs and brands want to, to be able to tap into that, um, as well as uh, being able to um, control who's able to access those sales items. Um, and codes can actually provide specifically single use unique codes can provide a controlled um, access to those kinds of rewards without eating into margins like a generic code would. Okay, great one. I'm, I'm, I'm already I'm already convinced now uh, the rest of the crowd. So mid six. So as a retailer, we don't have promo codes field in my basket. So can't run any code campaigns. True or false? False. So, and, and I touched upon this example earlier as well, which is the PlayStation 5 with BT. Uh, BT again um, managed to get their hands on a number of consoles and wanted to make them only available for super fast broadband users. And the challenge they had was they didn't have a promo code field at checkout. So what we did is we provided, we, we created a content gate over the PlayStation 5 SKU page itself. And the only way that product could be accessed was via a single use unique code. It was issued via, via a slick click to reveal button. Um, and that was pushed towards, uh, the customers were pushed towards um, via a CRM campaign as well. So there are a number of things that we can do, a number of mechanisms that, that can be put into place if a brand um, doesn't actually have a promo code field at checkout. Predominantly, uh, it's looking at doing something like a content gate where, where we are only providing exclusive access. Um, and what that does is it also, not only does it control who's got access to it, it also gives the brand the functionality of, of tapping into um, that, that sort of that promotional code customer journey that, that more often than not is, is integral to, to any kind of e-commerce strategy as well. I definitely didn't get my handle on the Sony PlayStation 5, so maybe I, I'm not the BT uh, <laughs> user like more. A bit more bank customer as well, my friend, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. <coughs> so, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Quentin, for my irritating cough. So, cashback is a really clunky customer journey we cannot fix. This, for so long, was a real problem, and... Um, in some cases it still is you know if you think about that that cashback journey of you can earn 6.4 percent cashback of 17 pound 23 and no i'm not going to do the math so please don't put me on the spot but you know that journey if you're clicking through from quick core top cashback of this is how much it, who's really got the time to sit there and work that out when actually they just want a really good deal um how we've approached this is because unicodo has has kind of evolved from being a you know, a, a unique code provider to, to being a promotion experience platform. We've really put some focus in the last couple of months in terms of how do we solve that promotion experience? How do we make it a smoother customer journey? So, uh, and actually we were talking about PI Live just before we went live. Um, we are gonna be introducing cashback experience, which is making that promotional journey from the likes of Top Cashback and quick code to the merchant sites a lot smoother taking the calculations away so that it's already done for them for the for the consumer so that they don't have to do the thinking they just want to um, redeem that deal um and uh, and just making that such a smoother smoother experience and as you can see on your screen there um that is starting to build out there where we're actually the cashback calculation has been taken care of for the customer the the product is is uh, or, or going through to the SKU page actually the the total amount of cashback has already the calculations already been made so rather than flitting through you know tab to tab and uh, and, and trying to work out what cashback is available to you actually why don't we smooth that journey out so um the, the myth has been busted. We've uh, we've worked out a way of making that cashback journey far smoother. Nice one, nice one. Very uh, interesting as well. Also to uh, see it live on the screen, how it works. Of course, I also have a couple of questions for you prepared because I want to uh, put you on the spot like you are right now. So let's let's go. So how did the idea for Unicodo uh, came first? First came about, sorry. So um, Unicoda was formed seven, nearly eight years ago uh, by Chris and Julius, our co-founders. Um, they were former of a, formerly of AWIN fame, um, and they know James and Ricky are about to speak very, very well as well. Um, and, and the vision was 
the reality is 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 that you know promotional codes are an integral part of of promotions affiliates every channel that, that, that we think about that that entire e-commerce strategy and landscape um, however generic codes get leaked they get shared they get misused they get abused so the vision for unicode originally was how can we provide control to those promotions how do we prevent leakage how do we still contribute to volume and incre incrementality um, whilst also controlling and making sure that it's reaching the right customers all right Absolutely. All right, that's one. That's sufficient. Great one. So if you uh, you um, so at the Unicode website, you talk about the difference between a traditional promotional marketing campaign and a promotional experience strategy. That Unicode did. So could you briefly briefly explain what you mean by this difference? I don't know about briefly, but I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> If you think about any promotion, um, any reward or incentive uh, designed to work across the entire customer lifecycle, so whether it's to acquire, convert, engage or retain customers, you could give them a code or you could give them five or 10 percent off. And, you know, it, it's it's an incentive designed to, to motivate. What's lacking in that in that kind of one dimensional approach is an experience that drives action. So what what the, the journey that we're on and, and what we offer to our clients and what we work on is that smoothing those journeys out. So how do we make them as frictionless, as seamless as and as smooth as possible to supercharge that conversion and that engagement? If you think about some of the promotion experiences like the BT co content gate, where we provided that VIP access. If you think about the Beauty Bay example that we've just been through as well, where again, it was early access so two hours before the customer went on general release. These things are designed to um, provide a better customer experience. And, and I guess, you know, the, the short answer is after, you know, in a post COVID world where everybody has, has had, the, you know, the expectations of customer experience are higher than they've ever been. Why can't we do the same for promotions as well? So if we talk about cashback experience, why don't we make promotion experiences at the fore of, of that, that e-commerce strategy? So just a question from my side as well. So over the last few years, right, with Unicodo involving as well as, as a promotional strategy, what is the biggest change you've seen over the last few years happening in terms of Q4 trading period? So I know it's very dependent on codes, promotion, bum, 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 but what's the biggest change you've seen in terms of the retailers? I think what's great to see, and and you know, I'm I'm relatively new to the industry as well, but what's been really great to see in my time here is is uh, the internal capabilities are, are, are higher than they've ever been. Um, you know, a lot of uh, brands are are able to do quite a lot of things in terms of you know gener gen generating codes, for example, and being able to share those with with networks and with um, with the end publishers and affiliates automatically. Uh, sorry, gener generating single use unique codes and and, uh, and appreciating that. What's lacking is is perhaps the automation of those processes. I think um, the biggest change I've seen is uh, a want to gamify promotions, so a want of driving even more engagement in that promotional experience of so things like mystery discounts or spin the wheels. You know, there's a higher demand now than there was even three months ago for something like that. So it's how do we, how do brands stand out from the crowd in terms of providing um, really high engaged, uh, high, highly engaging promotion experiences. I think that's the, been the biggest change in the last couple of months. Nice one. So it's great that you touched on that one. So now uh, I want to thank you so much Courtney, and uh, we speak to you again shortly because I see a lot of questions coming through for you as well. So good that you touched upon the fact that the gimmicking stuff with spin the wheel and make you smile for a code. So now I'd like to introduce you guys to James Bowden from Intently, my friend, the customer conversion uh, optimization platform. So what they do is just what Courtney ex explained as well. They use intent based solutions to increase the revenue. So welcome, James. How are you? Long time no speak. Um, yeah, good man. It's, uh, it's funny, Courtney literally just hit a nail on the head. We're seeing a huge um, increase in demand for for actually um, customer engagement through various different tactics, whether that's on the mobile. Like we did we did one the other day where uh, someone had to take a selfie of themselves on site when they were disengaged with um, with a page. They had to take a selfie of themselves and it appeared as a Polaroid on the screen of their phone. And they'd have to shake their phone to develop the Polaroid and then they could share it on social in order to receive a discount for a fast fashion brand. So 
things like that it's becoming much more prevalent within industry so i think yeah you're absolutely right on that one Corey. so you uh, touched upon uh, one point already so uh, why don't you showcase how uh, retailers can ensure that their customers receive the most relevant discounts Right, so Intently is a customer conversion company, and this means we turn clickers into buyers. Okay, so after investing huge amounts of time and budget into getting uh, users to your site, the best thing you can do is actually convert as many of them as possible into paying customers. Yeah, so on average, 96% of customers who visit a website abandon without actually buying anything. So life, life with Intently is, is a commitment. It's, it's our commitment to understanding the many different routes that your customers take when leaving your website. As specialists in customer conversion optimization, Intently identifies your prominent customer exit issues and creates on-site overlay campaigns which bring the user back to the purchase path, resulting in an increase to your conversion rate. Yeah, so did you also know that 85% of customers on a website who have something in their basket still abandon their purchase. And that is where Intently steps in. So we detect when a customer goes to leave the site, for example, clicking the X button, and we can then display a conversion overlay. Everything we do is based on live user behavior. Okay, so we look at three things, where a customer has been, Look for what channel, what source, what they're doing on site and where you as the brand need them to go. OK, so an example would be if a customer has come from Google search with the terms black dress deals. Yeah, this tells us for this example with the Boohoo group, Miss Pat, this tells us what they're looking for, but also that that customer is price conscious. They're on site browsing dresses between 30 and 50 pounds. They're a new customer and they go to abandon by clicking the X button like you see there. We would display them a campaign that highlights the existing offer for dresses on the site, making it relevant to their displayed behavior. And then the CTA directs them to a filtered page populated with dresses in that clearance offer, which are between the price range they were previously searching, helping to hyper personalize their journey. Okay. Sticking with fashion retail for the moment, you don't necessarily have to incentivize customers to increase your conversion rate. More often than not, you can do so just by personalizing their journey. So in the next example, what you'll see here with Karen Millen, one of the most effective ways um, to convert that 85% of customers who have something in their basket, in this example, should they be browsing elsewhere on the site and proceed to exit? There we go. The campaign overlay will pull in the image and the product name of the item that the customer has in their basket, reminding them of their intended purchase. Clicking the call to action button then directs them straight to the checkout. Interrupting their exit with a personalized message will regularly turn clickers into buyers. And in fact, we see campaigns like this exceed conversion rates of over 35%. Okay, because all advertiser campaigns are bespoke, right? We, we, can act, we can work across every sector. Insurance, for example, we read at what stage the customer is in their sign-up journey. So if they go to abandon, we can display a relevant message called a form nudge that in this case reminds them of the cashback that they would receive and reassures them of a speedy route to purchase. This campaign, just that one, receives 27% average conversion rate. Another way to increase conversion is by actually engaging with the customer, as we touched on. In this traffic shaping example, we can see that they browse the fragrance section longer than anywhere else on site, so we can help them find what we're looking for by interacting with them. Whittling down the 3,000 plus products to those that specifically match their interest and ultimately sending them on the path of least resistance to purchase. Okay. Looking at, again, touching on this, uh, this, this customer engagement element, looking at other examples of how to further engage with customers, we can get more creative. For example, supporting the seasonal activity for brands. 
example of this advent calendar here for L'Occitan, which is intended to stop people from leaving and re-engage them with the brand at one of the more competitive times of year. Everything, everything we do at Intently is based on user behaviour, paired with the advertiser's objectives. For example, AOV stretching or upsell campaigns. This example only informs the customer that their new phone doesn't contain a charger in the box, but allows them to add the matching products directly into their basket from the overlay, improving the UX whilst also increasing the AOV. Intently makes increasing your conversion rate easy. Yeah, first off, everything is tracked through AWIN. And because we work on a success only basis, we're attributed commission based solely on completed transactions. We create bespoke overlay designs, undertake the campaign setup and work with the brands directly, as well as the AWIN guys, on an ongoing basis to minimize customer exit intent issues across the website. And we are always, always focused on increasing the entire site's conversion rate. Uh, looks great, James, uh, especially those uh, gimmicky uh, advent calendar and that kind of stuff. We, we uh, work uh, together a lot on uh, those things to really be complementary to a retailer what they want as well. So that's really good to know for retailers as well. If you don't want anything to have, you can start with one or two campaigns as well to give the relevant discounts to the relevant visitors on your website. So mm -hmm. that's a good that James is making because Overall, 96 or 97% of your website traffic doesn't buy anything. So it's great to see a conversion rate of, on, on average, in our progress of 30%. So I also got some questions outlined for you to put you on the spot. Here we go. No, uh, Q4, uh, particularly Black Friday, James, are periods where we know consumers are looking for deals more than ever. Why is it so important to ensure that you're personalizing the deals uh, that they can so that they can use during these kind of events. Sorry, I was stumbling a little. <laughs> no, that's all right. So look, with Black Friday and these key promo periods, relevancy is key. Okay, you see a 26% increase in positive engagement with any campaign the moment you put a personalized element into it. Okay, so the key is to understand the user's journey, understand what they're after, and then only show them or interact with them in a way that's relevant to, to, to what they're what they're wanting. So it's very much a case of pair, pairing up the brand's objectives with an understanding of the customer behavior. You understand those two and you can create an effective conversion campaign. Nice one. So in your opinion, what are the advantages of working with a partner like yourself to the affiliate channel? So all the reward and, and, and no risk. Right, we work on a performance model uh, on the CPA only when we convert a customer. Um, the other benefits are you can help personalize a customer's journey and improve the UX of, uh, of the site. Increased conversion leads to increased revenue. And also it's much cheaper to convert the customer that's on, on your site already than to pay to bring them back. Um, also, it's a, we, we run a fully managed service that will not only under, help, you, help a brand understand their customers better, the buying traits that are displayed by them, but also increase their KPIs in the process. Um, it is uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much a no-brainer, particularly in a competitive time like we're coming up to Q4. So speaking about this very competitive time and also the Q4 trading period is heavily dependent on codes and stuff. So what are the main dilemmas you see a lot of retailers facing with their coupon strategies around Q4? So one of the things that um, brands need to be wary of, as we, we've seen in previous years, is avoid the race to the bottom. Okay, you've got to be smart about what you offer and to what type of customer. No customer is the same. Okay, which is, which leads the importance of to the importance of personalization. Use the coupon promotional mechanism to your advantage as a brand. Don't just discount. Don't just you know throw things away. Look at AOV stretching campaigns, cross sell campaigns. I mean, we touched on it previously, but switch it up. Offer a gift card to encourage that customer's secondary purchase instead of discounting. Yeah, an interesting one we, we run recently, we see a similar conversion rate on a what we call low value gift card than we do a high one. So that was offering a free cost of coffee, which is a cost value of three pounds or two pounds. We saw a similar conversion rate to a 20 pound Amazon voucher. 
So it really is just understanding the, the user and just being smart about what you put in front of them. So you touched upon uh, the fact of overlays. You also have another solution, right? In place, the code analysis solution that yeah. you're helping. So how can retailers work with that effectively? So we, so our, what we call our code analytics is a platform we've developed that um, gives you full visibility and insight over every single coupon code um, that a user tr tries on the site. Okay, what channel they've come from, what publisher they've come from, what's worked and what hasn't. And what this has allowed us to do is, you're, is to gain insights into what works well for different sectors. So for example, um, and obviously the affiliate sector, we know that discounting or discount co discount codes will work quite well. However, we also see that if a code is invalid, you know, like uh, Corny touched on, if it's fake or it's expired or, it, you know, anything that leads to it being invalid, that only sees a 12% conversion rate. Now, <laughs> that doesn't sound too bad, but actually, if you think about it, where the promo code box is, is usually at the checkout stage, it's way down the funnel. So actually what you could do is flip that and say that's an 88% bounce rate off that checkout process. That's if a code is invalid. However, when a code works, 60% plus conversion rate. So that delta there is a huge, huge amount of incremental revenue that's being missed out on. Well, what we can do is we can identify that, identify the behavior, identify that a user has tried a code that doesn't work and we can fix it. Yeah. We can to say, we're sorry this code hasn't worked, here's one that does. Now, what also works as well is that if they, you see that we've tried, that the user's tried save 20, for example, well, off, and it hasn't worked, offer them a 15% code or a 10% code. It still generates that higher conversion rate while saving the brand margin and, keep, and protecting the UX, which is one of the most important things. Excellent, so with that solution as well, you disrupt the industry as well because over the last couple of years as well you it is a problem in our industry as well to have a lack of mm -hmm. visibility about the coupon codes and and this and the strategies of course so that's a great one so is is that also based on on a cpa model that's solution. absolutely yeah yeah the fix when we if we were to fix fix the code or fix the the negative ux then that's purely based on cpa and interestingly, when you touched on the disruption, this is not a, a negative tool. What we've found is that um, brands that use this analytics and use the fix only see an upside. It's not intended to catch people out. It's intended to improve the UX of uh, for, for customers and their journey. Okay, great. So uh, thanks again, James. Uh, thanks again for the great insights, the, so the solution that you have. And I think you touched upon great things, how to give uh, the customers a deal a personalized deal and also with the code analysis uh, suite that you're offering. I think uh, the, re the retailer can't say no anymore to you. So finally, I'd like to introduce you to Ricky, Ricky Jones from Soretto. So finally, if you bought something, you definitely want to have that you generate more value from your buying customers, right, Ricky? Yeah, right. Yeah, no, thanks, Yana. Thank you for having me. So. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, just by, by way of introduction, my name is Ricky Jones. I'm Chief Commercial Officer at uh, Soretto. Um, so just to give you a bit of an introduction on Soretto uh, and what we do, for those who don't know, um, could you just go to the video so I can, to my timing to like, to the... Yeah, of course, no problem. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to have just the moment of chatting like, hey, how are you? Are you fine? Okay. Oh, right, sorry. We, no problem, we can jump we'll right into, <laughs> into okay. the demo. No problem, you're excited, huh? I can reckon. Okay. <laughs> you had to wait a long time. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Um, okay, so uh, so yeah, I'm going to uh, give you a bit, a bit background in terms of the business and what we do. So, Soretto is a referral marketing and social sharing technology um, that enables you to generate new customers by utilising your existing customers. Now, the way that it typically works is that a customer will come onto your website and go through the normal process of uh, buying something because they normally do. Uh, once they've done that, they check out, they land on the confirmation page. On that confirmation page, our technology will display something like this that you can see on the screen. So this example here is for uh, I saw it first who are a lifeline about. So 
if I go and buy something on the ISO at first website, when I check out and I land on the confirmation page, this is what I will see. Um, now we work with, we've got almost 200 clients that we currently work with uh, across multiple different sectors and territories. Um, fashion retail tends to be the, the type of client that works well because it's sort of a, quite a natural fit to this sort of activity, but we work with clients like uh, Hotel Chocolat, Nike, uh, Sky, HP, uh, and Summers, uh, Estee Lauder, Samsung. So we've got a lots of different clients in different sectors um, and territories as well. So not only the, we're a UK registered and um, based business, but we've got clients running in uh, North and South America, Australasia and across Europe as well. So truly global solution. Um, now, the example that you can see here is offering uh, me, I'm being offered 55% off my next order. Uh, and my friends are being offered 55% uh, off as well. All I need to do here on the example that you can see here is, is just adding my name and, uh, and my email address. Uh, once I've done that and I click start sharing, this then enables me to share this message with my friends. Uh, everything you can see is completely customizable, as is the whole journey that I'll come on to. But in terms of the creative uh, and the copy and the reward, uh, just in terms of the reward as well, so I'm what I'm being offered here is 55% off my next order and my friend is as well. Um, I get my 55% off as soon as I share that with my friends. So once I share it with them, the process will kick in. I'll talk you through that shortly. But in effect, as soon as I've shared it, I then qualify for my reward. You can set up um, what we call a trigger campaign. So what that means is that if we had a trigger in place here, I wouldn't get my 55% off until my friend has actually bought something. So um, obviously it's, you know, if I know that I'm going to get something just for sharing, I'm much more likely to share it. But some clients prefer to have, prefer to have a little bit more control when it comes to the rewards. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be a hard discount either. We can look at running, um, you know, gift cards um, or some sort of value added products or services. Or it's, it's ultimately it's up to the client what the reward is. But the more compelling the reward, the more likely people are to, you know, to share it and engage with it. Um, we've got uh, integrations with Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, uh, Twitter and, and Pinterest and uh, on mobile devices as well. Uh, it's Facebook Messenger. Uh, we also offer email sharing as well. Um, um, and uh, yeah, and Facebook on Facebook Messenger, uh, there's Facebook Messenger on mobile devices. You can have as many or as few of those as you like. We always suggest you have as many as possible just to give the customers uh, as many different options as possible but but again that's you know that's up to you uh, so once I'm ready to share that I just click share now that then opens up this new uh, tab here um, again this is uh, customizable I, I can say something about this if I want to or I can tag different friends into it if I want to but once I'm ready to share it with them I just click post to Facebook and that is then visible uh, for all of my friends on my Facebook feed to see so if I just uh, log into my Facebook account here. So all of my friends will now see this on my Facebook feed. So if one of them wants to get their 55% off, all they need to do is click on click on my post. They then get taken to this uh, landing page, which is hosted by us and is brand, it's branded up as, as clients. And again, it's customizable. Um, just some copy on here. Ricky wants to give you some. 50, uh, Ricky wants to give you 55% off uh, your next uh, shop. Um, and we've also got some copy at the bottom. So if you've got some terms and conditions that you want to attach to the reward, then you can do that as well. All my friend needs to do is click there to get their code. They can copy their code there, and that click actually opened the I saw it first a website in a new tab there. So. Uh, my friend can then go and redeem their code um, on the client's website. Just a point in terms of codes as well. So uh, Courtney talks about it um, in the first session as well, but we, we always find that unique single use codes are always best practice when it comes to, you know, when it comes to working with any voucher code partner. This particular client does just have a, you know, uh, just a standard evergreen code, but we, you know, we can work with either or. It depends on what your, you know, what your ability is to, to work with codes. 
Um, so that's the end of the journey for the friend. Uh, now, for me, as the person that shared this, I get two emails sent to me. Uh, these emails are sent from Soretto, but they're branded up as, as the clients, as you can see. Um, so the first one that we send is a forward email. So that's an email that I can forward on to my friends if I want to. Uh, I, I don't have to do that. But if I know that I've got some friends whose email addresses I know that would benefit from this, then I could just forward that on to them. Um, and we also send a uh, thank you email. And as it suggests, it says, you know, thanks for sharing. And because I get my reward just for sharing, it stipulates this in the email as well. So um, I can um, uh, I can click on that link there, which uh, takes me through to uh, the landing page um, that we were um, on. But you can you can click on the link in the email and then uh, that will take me through to a landing page, which is slightly different version of the one that we were just on uh, for the friend, but obviously copy that's relevant to um, to me. And um, I can go and uh, redeem my reward in much the same way as my friend did. Um, so that's the um, that's the journey, the customer journey. It's a pretty standard journey. Um, just a, a few additional points outside of that. So all of the design work is done by us. So we've got designers that sit on our side of the task of building all of the different elements of the campaign, the landing pages, the emails, uh, the light box as well, and confirmation page. Um, Obviously, that's on your instruction. So if you did want to work with us, what we would ask is for uh, you to confirm what reward that you want to uh, run with, with for, for the friend and the sharer. Uh, we've got some creative requirements that um, that we need uh, to to brief the designers once that once we've got all of that, um, I'll then brief the designers and then uh, they'll uh, put together a document for you to sign off. So nothing would go live until you are happy with how um, everything looks and feels um, and you know the I think you, you, you know we're, clearly we're uh, in the uh, AWIM master tag so th there's no additional integration work required at all to work with Soretto through AWIM all you need to do is to ask your AWIM account manager to activate us within the um, uh, within the AWIM master tag and once that's done you know we, we're good to go and what that means is that you you'll manage us as you do all of your other affiliates on your uh, on on your aiming program, um, and uh, you know in terms of reporting and deduplication of sales and you know payments everything like that. What you'll also get access to is your own analytics dashboard on our side, which will give you all of the information uh, that you see on AWIM, but you'll be able to see you know where how many shares are occurring and where those share shares are occurring to. So. You can start optimizing based on what you're seeing in, in the analytics dashboard as well. Um, and it's it's mostly based on a CPA. So all, the majority of the clients that we work with currently um, work with us on a pure CPA and we can typically work on your standard commission rates. We have had to recently introduce a, um, a nominal monthly fee for some smaller clients um just to make sure that it's commercially viable for us to you know run some of those smaller clients um but um but like i said the, the vast majority of activity we do run is on a pure cpa so um you know if anyone is interested then uh you know get in touch and i'll be more than happy to have a conversation with them we're also going to be um uh, exhibiting at pi live next month as well so uh, if anyone is uh, going to be going to that um pop along stand 32 um and uh yeah more than happy to have a conversation with you has nice one thanks ricky i think what i like about your solution as well in day one we demonstrate awareness and day two optimization but what happens when a customer has bought something from a website especially during q4 times you want to keep them coming to your brand instead of going to compare it as well so you're making basically ambassadors of your brand by making sharings and what you said as well, you don't have to share always a discount, but also value led promotions. I really like the idea as because brand loyalty is declining and declining over, over the last few years. So great insights for that. So um, just a question from my side, are there particular offer, offers or messaging that you have found are more effective than others? in ensuring customers share these campaigns with their own social groups? 
Yeah, I mean, what works best is a, a discount. Um, and, uh, you know, we find between sort of 10 and 20 percent tends to work best. Uh, we've got some clients. I mean, the, the example you saw there is I saw it first, which is, uh, you know, the extreme version of a discount. Um, and there are some, you know, there are some fast, fast fashion retailers out there that are, you know, um, are, are do a lot of, uh, you know, high code values. Um, but um, but yeah, that that's what we tend to see works best. I mean, we've got split testing uh, functionality uh, through the platform as well. So it, it, we, we do run sort of different rewards for different clients to see what works best and what what, what doesn't. Um, one particular retailer, tier one retailer that we did the split test for had a, you know, the standard rate was 15% and uh, they increased to 20%. Um, and we saw a doubling of the share rate. So the share rate, as that, there's, basic share rate for the 15% reward was about 10% and then we saw, saw a share rate when it went up to a 20% reward of a 20% share rate. So, you know, you see the, you know, the, the, in the, um, you know, the, the positive change that can make when you're increasing your reward only, you know, not, not even a huge amount. All right. Nice one. So uh, maybe I missed it, but when do you earn a commission? So because I know, OK, is it always on the sale that someone does or can mm. you speak more about the earnings of your commission? Yeah, yeah. So we uh, so it's a CPA. So we'll we'll earn. So in the example that you just saw, I saw it first. We'll earn a commission once the friend reward uh, redeems their reward. So we'll earn a commission on that sale, but we'll also earn a sale once the, the sharer has redeemed their code. Um, so that's the the what typically that will be the way in which we you know, earn commissions. Oh, so based on the on the on the page we saw, right? So if someone yes. lands on that page, redeems the codes, come back to your website. So really incremental value to a retailer instead of the fly yeah. right, viral codes that we see a lot happening. That's yeah. why we. I'm so happy that we're discussing this point as well. So to to touch on that point, so some brands may have anxieties about the potential for. A, a code that you're offering are going to go viral beyond yeah. uh, the, the audience they, they want to reach it. So how can they ensure they have control over the codes being issued and how are, and how they are used? Yeah, well, uh, Courtney touched on it at the very beginning, didn't he, around, uh, you know, unique codes and the, um, you know, the, the protection that offers clients. And we, we always suggest that a client works with us um, using unique codes. You know, it's just a much safer way to do it. We have got some anti-fraud measures that we can, um, you know, activate on our side to ensure that, uh, you know, we limit that that type of behaviour. Um, you know, we've got sort of things like IP blockers or URL blockers, so we can block any traffic. If, for example, where, you know, a coders, a customer's put something on a user-generated content um, voucher website, we, we can, you know, block any visits from that website onto the landing pages, uh, which, um, you know, helps to, you know, limit that type of behaviour. Um, so, yeah, we, we've got, uh, you know, a number of those types of things that we can implement to give clients peace of mind when it comes to running uh, that type of activity. Yeah, so and maybe we, you have, can start a collaboration between the three of you after this call with uh, Courtney from uh, Unicode. James with yeah. uh, pr protecting the codes and not the, that uh, that are uh, final for uh, the brand and for you for the re-sharing part. I see something blossoming, blossoming up here, so that uh, yeah. would be great. Okay. So from a personal data perspective, uh, Ricky, is this kind of uh, solution GDPR compliant? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, you know, that that's obviously because we we're, we're capturing customers' data, so that that uh, is obviously uh, vitally important for us to make sure that we are uh, we are compliant. Um, we've got a um, impact assessment uh, that we did. Um, well, we actually redid it again last year just to make sure that we we were sort of covered and up to date. Um, that we're happy to share with clients that outlines sort of how we are. Uh, compliant and, and what we, you know, what, how we manage our data and where it's stored and things like that. Um, on the light box, uh, on the confirmation page, you might not have seen it, but at the bottom of that, there is there are sort of customer uh, terms and conditions and privacy policy, which 
uh, customers agree to when sharing. So, um, and, and that sort of outlines um, additional information around how, how we, you know, what we do with their data, how long it's stored for, um, just so it's, uh, you know, it's 100% clear. Because we know, you know, we've been through this process with multiple uh, clients and, um, you know, large global organisations. We know that there are hoops that we need to jump through in order to, um, you know, to, to work with them. Um, and uh, so it is something that we are well versed in, um, but, but we've got the, you know, the documentation to back that up. Great one. Also, always great to know because I know it's one of the first questions that uh, retailers will ask. So, mm. yeah, when I uh, also spoke about Soretto with some retailers, they say like, yeah, I've already used some kinds of solution that they are doing, so it's no need and no point for me to work with a third party as well. Can you explain yeah. more about it? Yeah, I mean, there's well, there's t typically two ways in which a client would, uh, you know, would be doing referral activity. One would be the, their own internal scheme, um, and then another way would be working with another third party uh, similar to what we do. Uh, if you're doing it internal, well, there's both occasions. I mean, it's always worthwhile reviewing what you do because you know we we know that um, we're obviously there are other companies that do what we do so we know that there are uh, other businesses out there that work with clients and when we've uh, reviewed uh, what they've done sometimes we do identify gaps in, in what they do and, and how we can um, you know help them improve on their uh, on their current um, you know their current scheme so uh, so you know what I would say is that if any client is doing it then it's always worth a conversation because you know you, you don't know if your uh, your current scheme is fully optimized. Um, there might be some additional ways in which we can help you maximize your revenue through the channel. And also, what, yeah. what I hear a lot happening is that they some other companies ask for high fees to even start for design and that kind of stuff. And you are yeah. purely on a CPA if it's match the qualification criteria of course what you just described right yeah yeah exactly yeah i mean you know we we um there, there are a couple of our competitors that we know charge sort of four or five figure setup fees and um you know monthly minimums that you'll need to hit regardless of size so uh you know we are certainly more cost effective than some of those great one so i want to thank you all uh Personally as well, Ricky. Thank you for your uh, great insights. Uh, so, and also great insights from uh, all of uh, the attendees, of course, and the panelists here today. And uh, particular for this promotional dependent peak trading period coming up with you guys. Uh, I uh, see some great things happening in our live Q and A. So I think we have some questions uh, over there. So uh, let's start with the uh, long waiting, Courtney. So hi, Courtney. Uh, interested to hear the uh, creative ways that can be used for codes. Is there a campaign that, stand out, that stands out to you as creating unique client delight that has made a brand think differently about discounting? That was a long question. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, would you mind repeating the question again? <laughs> yeah, so uh, is there a campaign that stands out for you as creating unique client delight that has made a brand think differently about discounting? So that you change the, uh, the 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 way they think about giving discounts. Yeah, there's there's a couple of examples that spring to mind. I think one of the ones, if we if we think, you know, not necessarily reliant on e-commerce necessarily, but but actually in the travel industry, it's how can you so uh, quite a big tour operator that we work with, um, and and then that, that instant they were built for two parents, two kids. Um, they had particular offers for that customer seg that that kind of ideal customer profile, but the reality was was that they didn't offer any discounts to any other customer segments. Um, and what they realised was there were a lot of people, as in solo travellers, individual travellers, who were uh, looking for travel on their own, which is very sad. We can get the violins out, but actually, if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, is quite. Uh, not economical for the brand, um, but also um, it, it, it's just not a market that they thought of before. So the, the actual tour operator considered changing their policy and providing discounts to solo travellers. 
And as a result of that, they saw a significant increase in terms of that um, being able to service a new customer segment, in fact, creating a new customer segment altogether. So um, that's kind of one example. And the way that was uh, facilitated by Unicoda was we looked at on-site search behavior um, and then we um, we were able to serve particular kind of banner banners and nudges and um, more prominent displays of certain hotels or um, or destinations that were specific to, to solo travelers. I'm not talking club 18 to 30 or anything like that, but um, but but particularly servicing uh, <laughs> those particular hotels destinations that were perhaps a little bit low in occupancy. So it, it's just looking at a different kind of uh, vertical or, or industry that they started thinking differently about dis discounting to a different customer segment as a result of that. Great one, great insights. So uh, James, putting you on the spot again. So most common thing. So how do you stop the pop-up coming up too much? For example, if the customer went up to the navigation item going out in your example, but didn't actually click to leave. Mm -hmm. So with that we've got a variety of different controls okay so we can actually set it so that it will a uh, conversion overlay will only trigger when they go to click the x button itself we also can layer into that different elements of it of their behavior so for example only allow that this particular campaign to be shown when they have viewed certain elements on the page or they've interacted with the product for a certain amount of time um, that's just on the desktop. On the mobile, we've developed true behavioral triggers for that as well. So if the customer goes to open a new tab, hit, click the back button or hit the URL bar on the mobile, those are three key indicators of that customer migrating away from the page. And therefore those can be our triggers. So everything, everything is based on actual customer behavior. Um, but we've got extremely strict rules uh, surrounding when a campaign can trigger or not because Ultimately, you can never interrupt a customer's journey. You can only, you should only ever enhance it. The second thing about that is that a customer will only ever see, with us, will only ever see one conversion campaign or conversion overlay. If they, they see one, they won't see another one for typically four or five days. They cannot see it. And that's to avoid them getting used to that, uh, that sort of uh, engagement mechanism. And yeah, I wanted to touch on one other thing, actually, that you mentioned previously with, uh, with Ricky there when um, brands say that they're already doing it. Yeah, and I think that this would apply to most of us here and most tech partners. I absolutely love that question because we get it a lot. You know, how annoying is it when you land on a site, the first thing before you've even had a chance to look at the page, you're hit bang with a with some form of, all I can call it as a pop-up saying, enter your email address to receive 10% 10 10 off. So many brands are doing it and they're saying, we do this ourselves. Now, what we'll do, and I think everyone will do in this in this instance, is we look at what the activity they're undertaking, and you'll see, and we'll point out that they're obviously doing it because they see value in it. Yeah, they're they're not going to be putting putting up and trying to collect email addresses or doing their own things unless they see value in it. However, they're only doing five percent of what they could be doing, and that's where we come in. That's where we can help and we can consult with them and actually start saying, well, look. You can do this, 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 and this, which will improve the overall site's conversion rate. Okay, as opposed to just scratching the surface of what you're doing now. True, true. And and you only show for two to five percent of the traffic, right? So not the whole traffic. Typically, we only show if we work with a brand. We work with a uh, one example would be a brand that has thirty-five million unique visits a month. We show to less than one percent of their entire traffic. However, the incremental we, revenue we drive them on a month is millions. And that's because everything has to be personalized. Everything has to be hyper targeted. OK, great. Great to know. So uh, Ricky, I got one for you from uh, Leanne from Top Villas. Thank you for mentioning the names. Also, always nice to hear someone's name instead of anonymous. I don't know who the guy anonymous is, but he asked a lot of questions. So uh, do you have any examples of travel brands that you work with? Yeah, uh, yeah we do. I mean, obviously, travel's been uh, you know, decimated in the past day, two months or two years. But we've, um, you know, a couple of clients that we were working with before ended up, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately going out of business, such as uh, Thomas Cook. So, um, but we do, I mean, we've got a, a small, uh, some sort of small, lesser known uh, travel brands like Avanci, which is a French um, 
French travel brand, uh, and also White Link, which is the uh, you know, the Isle of Wight ferry crossing. Um, so yes, yes, we do have some uh, experience of those types of clients. Nice one. But I think then uh, the, the next question that I have for you is also already covered. So there was, I work for a global retailer. Does the solution work in languages other than English? And does it also change between US and UK English? Yes, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. So we we uh, we handle all localization. So any campaign, any country that we've got campaigning currently, then uh, we, you know, we obviously are aware of the currency and language um, requirements in those markets. So yes, yeah, we can do that. Nice one. That's one. And I'm uh, jumping back to Courtney. So Courtney, what's the integration process look like for Unicode? Are there different options depending on the integration and are there benefits or drawbacks between them? Do I have to repeat it again? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Courtney? Or you're on mute. You're on mute. You have to unmute yourself. No. But let's jump to James real quickly. You, you have to unmute yourself, Courtney. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so, James, it, it happens all the time with this live live uh, webinars and uh, live events. So, so uh, sorry for it. So, um, James, uh, Intendi looks to have a loads of great features. So, thanks for that. Is there a campaign type that always works as a good place to start? Yeah, absolutely. The best, one of the best places to start is the second example I gave with Karen Millen, and that is what we call a dynamic basket campaign. Now, that very simply, if you remember back to the example, it pulls in the item that the customer has in their basket if they're browsing elsewhere and the product information as well as the image. Now, what that does is it's non-intrusive. It's in the bottom of the screen. It's allowing the customer to to see what it was again that they originally wanted and the thing is it sees a conversion rate of over 35 percent um, and it does so without needing to discount at all it literally just through personalization and, and just by reaffirming what the customer wanted and showing them that you can generate a 35 percent conversion rate without eating into your margin at all so that we always are well often recommend is a really good place to start because you you see the proof of proof concept there and then we can grow and develop and add strategies as, as necessary. Nice one. Courtney, are you already unmuted? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> this thing is a nightmare, isn't it? Should learn after two years. Uh, great question about integration and Ricky actually touched upon it earlier. Um, the benefit of working with all three of us actually is that we're all part of Awin's master tag. So, um, particularly for us as an example, we, we're currently offering a board yellow already. He's gone. Um, it, the um, the benefit of, of working with us at the moment is we're offering a three month free trial, um, which means that we can actually simply switch. You, 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 you raise a ticket with AWIN, with your AM, uh, who raise a ticket with the tech team and they'll switch us on in the master tag. I think it's the same for, for the other two guys as well, or the, the other two uh, companies as well. Um, we'll do a little bit of configuration from our side, so it, it kind of avoids any kind of major IT work or any kind of major integrations. Of course, if you want to do something more complex, so something like more of a native um, app work or some more kind of detailed basket level discounts or, or product level discounts, um, that will need a bit more of an API integration. But the best part about, about testing Soretto, Unicodo and Intently uh, is that, that we're part of Awin's master tag, so you can actually just switch us on very easily. And you boys both owe me 50 quid each now for giving you a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I, I got a question for all of you. So uh, when, so you, you touched upon it already, Courtney, and Soretto also uh, and, uh, from Ricky. So if a retailer now is in the room and is very interested in working with one of you, with all of you, how many times does it take to get a plug in life from our perspective? It's like one day or two days, so that's fine. But from your side, how many days does it take to have a program live or, or, the, or the plug in life and working? Especially because we're heading to, to peak trading. So I'll first give it to Ricky. Yeah, I mean, we can uh, move quite quickly on our side. I, I would say uh, what, what tends to 
take the most amount of time is, is getting sign off from the client side. So usually we'll, we will be able to, you know, once we've received the creative and the details of the reward, the, the um, designers on our side usually take sort of one or two days to, to put that together and send that over to the client. Uh, so, it, and at that point, it's just about if you're going to be running with either unique codes, we'll, we'll need a list of those codes to upload to, to the campaign. Um, and um, so once, you know, once we've done that on our side, we'll send that over to the client for sign off. Once we've got that back from the client, we can activate the campaign. So we can get things live within a week. Uh, probably we've had about three clients that have launched that have actually been live within a week, but it, but it can be done. It's just what it tends to sort of, you know, slow down once we've passed things over to the client. So, uh, so yeah, within a week, usually sort of, uh, you know, a couple of weeks from start to finish for us. Okay. Thanks for that. Yeah, sorry, I was also on mute. I mute myself. That's better. So, uh, James, go ahead. How long does it take? So thankfully, uh, we, we, with us, the way we're set up is we have the design teams and our tech teams all in-house. And so with the, let's say, the Dynamic Basket campaign, we can be live within a day. Um, it's uh, it's a very quick turnaround on our side. Um, we also have 24-7 um, support and coverage because we're on the site. If the site changes or anything like that, and we obviously need to be able to act in real time. So for us, um, yeah, going live from getting the yes, let's let's get uh, an initial campaign live. We could we could very quickly um, or very easily be live within 24 hours. Great one, and last but not least, to give it to Courts, Courtney. Yeah, we uh, as you said, yeah, we, it, it'll take a day or two for it to be switched on in in a -Wind master tag, and for our our configuration will take a few days after that. Um, we could have a campaign live um, within two weeks, kind of similar to what Ricky was saying. Um, what we'd want to know is we want to deep dive into, you know, what is it the problem we're trying to solve? Where where is the element control going to be brought in? Um, we've, we've had a couple of clients sign up today specifically because they want to get control within the CRM channel, so because they don't need to leak into the affiliate space. So, um, it's a very easy fix for us in terms of giving giving an HTML snippet that drops single use unique codes into the bodies of, of emails for CRM campaigns. Something like that can take a couple of days, for example, for something a bit more complex in terms of, um, you know, a content gate or something like that, you're looking at around about two weeks. Okay, great. Great to know. So if anyone wants to start with any of these partners, jump fire me in, in the email because we can get a live within one day to, 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 to four weeks, as said, ready for peak. So thank you again, guys, for joining us uh, this week and all the meetings. Uh, a big applause for everyone, for Ricky, for James, and also for, for Courtney. Uh, catch up soon with the three of you as well. So uh, for the crowd, thank you again for joining us this week, and I hope you find it uh, as valuable as I did. It was my first three-day three -day webinar series, so as a Dutchie that is not uh, native English, thank you very much for myself as well. So in this phase, we uh, we distinct three phases. So we had the awareness phase in day one, we have the op optimization phase in day two, and finally action. Each of day, we shared some useful uh, examples of tech content and a win, and how they all can improve all your marketing strategies, and basically the customer experience that lands on the websites. So this, these, these solutions are helping you as a retailer with a variety of common dilemmas during Q4. So increasing your average order value, increasing conversion rate, but all based on the CPA model. I truly believe our tech partners are the best way for you to overcome many of the challenges you may face or are currently facing during peak season. So if you have any additional questions, or we didn't get around to your questions today, Please feel free to reach out to me directly via my AWIN email, which you should be able to see right now on your, on your screen. You pronounce this jelle.plug at awin.com, but you can call me Jelly, also fine. No problem at all. So everyone, thank you today. Thank you for your time for the whole week. Good luck for Q4. It should be a very interesting end of the year for all of you. Thank you very much.